You're listening to the Options Insider Radio Network, the home of the Options Podcast. For more quality options programs, visit theoptionsinsider.com or search for Options Insider Radio Network in your podcast provider of choice. Listeners can also access all of our programming through our mobile app available on the iTunes and Google Play stores. Select programs are also available via live stream at Mixler.com slash options dash insider. That's M-I-X-L-R dot com slash options dash insider. Don't forget to follow along with your favorite programs and submit your own questions for the hosts at Twitter.com slash options, StockTwits.com slash options, Facebook.com slash the options insider, or via questions at the options insider.com. Welcome to Volatility Views, the premier program for volatility traders. Each week, we'll take a deep dive into the world of volatility with in-depth analysis, trading activity reviews, strategy breakdowns, cutting-edge education, and much more. We'll also bring you exclusive conversations with the traders, researchers, and asset managers who are reshaping the volatility landscape. If it involves volatility, then you'll find it on Volatility Views. Volatility Views is brought to you by Myax, one of the fastest options platforms in the world. Myax is now trading options on the Spikes Volatility Index, offering pinpoint accuracy, radically faster dissemination, and a highly transparent settlement auction for confident trading, all for competitive exchange fees. It's time to make a change and give yourself an edge with Spikes. Learn more about Spikes at www.myaxoptions.com com slash spikes options involve risk and are not suitable for all investors the statements made are provided for information purposes only and are not intended to provide and should not be relied on for financial or legal advice and now it's time to take a deep dive into the world of volatility it's time for volatility views All right, everybody, that music can mean just one thing. We're back. We're back just in time <laughs> for a little bit of volatility views. Yeah, we were off last week for an extended President's Week holiday. Not like a lot really happened in the intervening two weeks. We've been off actually since Valentine's Day. Hard to believe. We left, you know, love was in the air. It seemed like the pandemic woes, at least from a market perspective, were kind of behind us. People really weren't pricing in a lot of risk. There's a lot more focus on things like the the domestic political front and other things like that, with the trade war finally behind us, all these other good things, earnings. Fast forward a couple of weeks, and oh, how the worm has turned, how the mighty has fallen. In this case, almost quite literally, historic, historic sell-offs across the board, a lot to digest here on the show. So we're happy to be back. My name, of course, Mark Longo from TheOptionsInsider.com, as well as, of course, from the ever-exciting, especially this week, The Options Insider Radio Network. A lot of great content coming at you from a lot of great perspectives. Hope you guys are enjoying that this week as this, this market is just continuing to just drive down <laughs> through the bedrock and beyond. We've got some good folks to help me parse it all. First off, joining us once again from the safety of his compound in the hinterlands on the far, far reaches, the shores of Maine. He could see off into Canada across the oceans there. <laughs> That's how far out he is, listeners. He is the Rock Lobster, Mr. Andrew Giovinazzi, a.k.a. the guy who single-handedly put Maine on the map from an option search perspective when it comes to Google. Mr. Giovinazzi, welcome back to the show. How are you liking life in the compound right now, sir? You know, you used to mock my rock. Now you want my rock. That's all I'm saying. So time, I, you know, I, I can wait a very, very long time to be correct, sir. That you can. And I'm, I'm just saying, by the way, you know, keep, keep one of those sections of the bunker open. You only need a few slots, like three or so. That's all. So keep one of those, keep one of those sections open just on the off, uh, the off chance that you may have, have some visitors there <laughs> from uh, the Chicagoland area in the near 
future. Forget about the meatball. He doesn't need them. He just need a few extra uh, for us. Luckily, I also have connections in another state near, nearby. Like, so I can also I can retreat into many vast reaches of the far northeast if that indeed does come to pass. And also joining us, he's so fired up, listeners, by the volatility that is engulfing the markets right now that he leapt out of bed in the dark wee hours of the morning in Sydney just to join us. He is Mr. Simon Ho, a.k.a. the Spikes Father, a.k.a. the CEO over there at T3 Index. Simon, good morning. I wish I had better, better news to wake you up with, but unfortunately it's not good yet again. And welcome back to the Volatility Views program. Well, thank you. But who, who said it's not good news? I mean, is your long vol, you're pretty stoked. That's true. That's <laughs> I, I'm, true. I'm pretty pleased. That's true. I am, uh, for, I am speaking from a very certain perspective. I know a lot of our audience uh, likes to take the other side, too. So you're right. Depending on your perspective, it could be a great week as we keep on rolling right on into our volatility review. It's time to break down the latest developments in the volatility trading world. It's time for the Volatility Review. All right, buddy. Welcome to the Vol Review. Hopefully you're looking at things like Simon, very much a glass half full, the lingering specter of pandemic not lurking in the back of your mind at all <laughs> out there. Uh, but yeah, what a what a couple of weeks it has been since our last show, Valentine's Day. Everyone happy. Seemed like, the, for the time being, at least the worst was behind us. And now we fast forward a couple of weeks, particularly into this week. And we have just, uh, I think, historic doesn't even really begin to encapsulate the sell-off, the breadth of the sell-off that we're seeing out here. Everyone is just insane about the point levels in the Dow, so I guess we'll start there, even though we don't really watch the Dow a lot, everyone and their mother. You turn on any channel, they're talking Dow, 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 because the point, the numbers are impressive. Over a 1,000 points here, over a 1,000 points there. Uh, but uh, Dow on pace. By the way, across the board, we're pretty much in correction territory. Now, listen, most of the major indices off more than 10%, which is pretty much how you factor in uh, a, uh, a technical correction. Dow on pace actually for its fifth worst week of all time, uh, at the record at the time this was correct, I think this was this number coming out of Market Watch, I believe, uh, was uh, about thirteen and a half percent off. Uh, then followed number four by May of nineteen forty, which is an interest, interesting timing. Uh, obviously, bad times for the world there in nineteen forty. Uh, you may have, you might have thought maybe later on nineteen forty one when the war escalated, things like that would have been the time. But no, May seventeenth, nineteen forty. Interesting timing there. Then of course September twenty first, two thousand and one. A dark period for the market. It was off 14. It was off 14.21% in 1940, 14.26% in a week in uh, September of 2001. Then July 21st, 1993, off about 15.5%. And the number one, of course, the dark days, of the financial crisis, October 10th, 2008, off 18.15%. Uh, this is also the fastest to note, the fastest decline to a correction from, remember, we were just talking record highs a few weeks ago. This is the fastest move from a record high to a correction in the history of the Dow, about nine or so uh, trading sessions. The Dow hit its high on February 8th of 2018. SPX, the S, pretty much the same deal. It was on pace for about 11.7% weekly decline coming into the show. That's among the 10 worst sell-offs out there as well. Also, like the Dow, this ranks as pretty much the fastest reversal from a record high to a correction in just six trading sessions for the S&P. That is the fastest on record for the history of uh, the S&P out there. And if you go, of course, 20% would meet us the actual technical definition of a bear market. Not quite there yet, listeners, thankfully, but uh, interesting stuff. And the NASDAQ, of course, also feeling the heat. It's off about 10.5% on the week. That would make this drop the eighth worst in its 50-year history, uh, if you're looking the worst, it was back in the dark days at the end of the dot-com days of, like, you know, remember late March, early April is when this really started, the warm started to turn in the dot-com days, and particularly April 13th, when uh, the NASDAQ sold off about 25.3% is the worst week ever in the NASDAQ. So not quite there in the NASDAQ yet either, but still interesting stuff, of course. All of our volatility metrics, you're seeing all this red on the screen. That means a lot of green on the screen. 
when it comes to all things volatility. Uh, our old friend uh, VIX right now actually threatening a 48. Is that about 47.90? It hit earlier today. It hit about a 48 and a half. That seems like that. Well, actually, no, it got over 49. 49 and about a quarter uh, out there earlier today. So either way, it's up high, up size from our last show, which was two weeks ago now. So in the two weeks now, it's up 32 points. We're seeing almost exactly similar levels from uh, Spikes. Spikes a little bit shy of a 48 handle right now, 47.85. Uh, that puts it up about 34 handles, a mere 34 handles from where it was. The Spikes high today was about 48.70. That also was earlier today. VBIX at about a 126.75, almost a 127. So we say, as always, when it gets in the triple digits, start paying attention. When it gets over 110, certainly start paying attention. When it hits 120, hey, all bets are off. We're well north of that right now. We're at about a, almost a 127. That puts us up 28 handles from where we were on Valentine's Day. What a quiet, tranquil Valentine's Day we had now, <laughs> in retrospect. Perhaps we didn't appreciate it enough here on the show. But Simon, I like your optimism. I like the way you're looking at things. So break it down for us, sir. Uh, it's been a, just a maelstrom of volatility over the last two weeks, particularly this week. What in particular is lighting up your tape and catching your eye out here today, sir? Well, um, the thing that catches my eye is that the futures contracts are only at 28. The front contract is only at 28. Point eight, when the cash is at 48.7. That has got to be, I would imagine, a close to a record dis- disparity between the two, because let's face it, we're talking March. It's three weeks away, that fund contract. I am kind of surprised by that, to be honest. I'm not surprised with the, the level of the index itself. I think that makes perfect sense. As you said uh, at your opening there, this is one of the most, um, the swiftest falls that we've ever seen. Um, it, it, even, I think, comparing the big ones, like the 2008 um, and 1987. So um, this, for me, it's, it feels like the, 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 the futures prices should be higher. And just so that people know, I mean, you're talking about a 20-point differential between the cash and the future where it only has three weeks to go pretty much until expiration. So I, I, I still think that the futures has some, has some um, move to make. What's also interesting about this, I'm a bit perplexed because – in the past few years, you've seen this kind of behavior. The VIX index will go up, but the futures don't carry anywhere near as well. The, the issue uh, has always been before that, well, you know, this QE is abound, abounds, everyone's very, very generally bullish, there's nothing really to, to rock the boat. This time around, you're dealing with something which we have really no idea how it's going to evolve, you know, whereas with an economy, you can kind of tell that. You can say, well, the, the policy response will be to lower interest rates. We'll all be fine. The, the market will rally again, and it's, it's happy days. This time around, the virus adds a dimension that we simply cannot forecast, and I think that it could potentially be significantly worse. So I'm not quite sure, and maybe our learned um, friends on the, on, the, on the show here can sort of give me some advice, but why is the differential between these two so large? I have no idea. I think the future should be higher. I don't necessarily think that the cash is too high. Yeah, it's kind of hard to argue the cash The cash is too high there. But you're right. We're going to get to the futures later. But let's, let's get to them now. Uh, you're right. An enormous disparity. I've often called you know, a, a few points, a gulf, a chasm. You know, And now we're seeing almost 20 points between that March future, which is the front future. It's at about a 29 and a quarter right now. And the cash is a little bit shy of 49, about 48, 80 or so. Uh, so you're talking nearly 20 point chasm. That's that's just an abyss. That that's just that's beyond a gulf over there between the cash and and the future. And if something has to happen there. You're right. They can't both stay there. Either the futures have to come up or the cash has to come in. And I think it is hard to argue that the cash is overdone. So you're right. That is a little strange. And again, something I wanted I, I had noted here coming into the show that this is. A weird time. Maybe the VIX future is signaling that uh, maybe this is a wee bit overdone. Maybe we're getting ahead of ourselves. I don't know. It is weird because usually, you know, usually the vol traders are the first to kind of pick up on this sort of thing. And yet, uh, right now, at least, they're kind of they're kind of pumping the brakes a little bit. You look all the way out across the term structure. We were just talking not too long ago in our last show how crazy October and November looked. You know, they had that little bit of premium. For the election, and that that crazy premium is at about a twenty three and a half right now. So they're clearly pricing in a mitigation of the virus, mitigation of the concerns as we get out through the summer months. Uh, they're not even pri- so they're not pricing it now, and they're certainly not pricing it a few months from now. So 
Yeah, this is a bit of a head scratcher. Uh, this might be a good time to uh, see if we can corral uh, those uh, the Thompson twins who live on that VIX futures curve and say, "Hey, what what the heck? <laughs> this is a bit of a weird one." Mr. Rock Lobster, I put that same question to you, sir. What the heck? As well as uh, what is going on in the world of the Vol Trading Club? What are the crazies? What are they up to? What are they trading in this maelstrom? Or is this just too much of a good thing for your Vol crazies? And, and they're sitting on their hands, so taking the ball and going home. So a couple of things. Uh, so on the Twitter sphere, you could actually go on right now. What is his name? Like who's six figure Vance? Is what's his name? Vance Harwood or something like that? Um, what's his name? Yeah, he's been on the show. Right? Mark uh, Vance. What's his name? Vance. Yeah, Vance. Six yeah, that's investing. Right. That's right. He actually had a thing just recently about it uh, on the fixed rate term structure. If you look at that, and uh, I agree with him because he's pretty good at this stuff, but that's uh, that's what it is. Um, I, I think because we had some sharp moves, the front end of the front front end of vol in SPX, like the you know weekly vol is very high, but if you now adjust for forward vol, you know you're going to have a depressed back month. So you know, since you can sort of, you know, future can be a clean hedge versus SPX options, you the forward vol should kind of match for those. So I think that's when the when the sell off is so sharp, front end vol gets super high. And which would make the forward vol of the back month options look less. And then then the future so he actually has a thing if you go to his Twitter site or whatever. Uh, if you just go Vance Harwood on Twitter, he has kind of a a nice little set. He, he he does a forward vol chart of how that works, and you could see the the math behind it. So it's not totally. Um, uh, and I'll and I'll retweet it right now from my website, uh, and it, it it makes sense. So there's there is a reason for it, and I think part of it this time is because the drop was so steep and so fast. It created the high end in the front creates a high vol, which will depress forward vol of the back. So there's. That's, I think, the deal with that. So he has kind of a – he does a chart of it, and it, it, so it makes sense. So I think that's the reason. Um, the second is what's going on. To, I think this kind of backwardation is a tremendous opportunity, though, because, you know, VX, the vol products, they're decaying up at about a buck a day, like literally $1 a day. Um, and if we continue to have like 3%, 3% 3 moves a day, the VIX is not coming down. You know, those futures are just going to pull up. So there's – I think there's a lot of opportunity. Those are the ideas that we had. So uh, in our chat room or, and then in my vault club, like my idea was, okay, I want to buy VIX call spread um, and I want to buy spy calls against it um, because, okay, something's got to happen. Either it gets, you know, it gets bad or, you know, we get this sort of, oh, the Fed's going to do something. They're going to announce some, you know, no matter what, you know, nobody's going to go broke. So they announced something like that. And, you know, the average bear market rally is – seven percent um and you just close your call so i think that's you know i think the realized vault type of trade where you got kind of this parabolic type move everywhere um makes the most uh most sense to me um here and i'm gonna and i'm gonna put this in our in our skype window here for you guys um so this is a nice thing to tweet out for you, Mark. Um, so, uh, so that's why we're looking. So for the most part, I think the pit crazies are doing, they're doing okay. If you're following the vault newsletter club, we're doing well. Um, all six trades for the year up money. Um, and I could have traded them a little better, but they're still, uh, they're doing okay because, you know, we try to just take advantage of the vault disparity that we have. Uh, we're off to a good start. Um, and but I is this going to end anytime soon? I I have no idea. I think there's there's no at some point we either have to have less infections or something something that has to reduce kind of the strain, right? Okay, we're not going to fly for two weeks. I think if they announce something like that, I think it would rally because then it's like okay, we're going to stop flying and everybody's just going to take what they got with infections and see what we have. I think the fact that they're kind of still flying around and has a lot of uncertainty you know the market does not like uncertainty um and i think that's uh and i think that's where we are right now so i don't um i i think anything could happen um the the 30-day the straddle in vix is 270 bucks so take your pick that's 540 point range in SP, spx over the next 30 days what do you want to do so um and at this point, what's up? What was our range today? We were down a hundred, 
almost up 100, and it looks like we're going to be back down 100 into the close. So uh, um, we are trading at massive, 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 massive levels. So uh, I don't think anything's going to change on that. Um, and, you know, it would not surprise me for us to be, we're at, what, through 2,900. I, it would not surprise me at all if we were 3,100 by the end of Monday, if they have any kind of news and saying we're just not going to let all the world economy die we're not going to let the airlines die but we're going to come up with some solution um maybe they do i don't know but uh i would expect those type of moves at any time and that's kind of and that's where i think we are right now um although there is some green today like the chip stocks are green um solidly green uh roku green um square green so there's definitely Definitely, there is definitely some uh, somebody's buying something out there, and um, I I think that's you know somebody's dipping the toe in now. So you know who's dipping the toe in Andrew is that guy who was buying all those timeshare calls yesterday in the option block. That guy, <laughs> that guy's just diving How in deep. He doing? Yeah, I don't know. We should check on those. I, I'm going to guess he's probably not doing too well because, uh, yeah, timeshare. Who, who, you know, who thought in the pandemic timeshares were the place to go? Apparently that guy did. Uh, this is the – you said where we find ourselves right now. This is the environment we find ourselves right now. I just, just heard from a big conference I go to every year. I'm coming up in a couple of weeks. It has a lot of attendees from overseas, shall we say, Europe, and particularly a lot from Asia. Uh, they just sent out a notice. They're implementing a no handshake or hug policy. For the conference, they're also going to give out face masks and hand sanitizer at the registration desk. Uh, you know, if you get into those levels, giving out face masks, maybe you just – and they're also encouraging anyone who obviously has been in contact with China to not come. So, uh, yeah, if you get into that level, maybe you should probably just consider canceling uh, the conference. Not a time when you want to bring the entire global derivatives industry together, I don't think, particularly from large swaths that have already been – impacted negatively by the virus. That's the world we find ourselves in today, listeners. Let's look and see what we're looking at from a volatility products perspective. We just talked about the futures, and that's uh, a pretty pretty crazy beast out there. You should encourage you uh, to check that out. We've got this interesting, uh, <laughs> interesting uh, little chart that the Rock Lobster uh, just shared with us. Maybe we'll see if we can get that out for you guys as well. But we talked about the chasm out there in the VIX futures. Let's move on over to uh, the Spikes options. Yet another new week, another new OI record out here for Spikes options. At about 95,000 contracts open right now. The big print, almost half of that, are on the April 25s, 50,000 and one, 50,000 and one to be precise, of those bad boys open right now. Followed by number two, 25,000, hence the one by two. Of the April 17 call. So if you're playing the home game, it's a 17, 25, 1 by 2 in April right now, listeners, which is looking pretty good, I got to say. That's looking, uh, that's looking pretty nice. <laughs> and then uh, number three, we've got uh, 80, almost 9,000 of the March 23s. And number four, about 4,500 of the March 16. So 16, 23 in March. And then around out the top five, we got 4,000 of the March 25 calls out there. Uh, let's play that same game out here in Vixland as well. Well, before we get to that really quickly, I don't know, Simon, it's been a while, a couple of weeks since we've chatted with you, and you are the keeper of all things uh, Spikes and Spikes options in particular. Any activity or any just interesting developments out there? Are you, are you jazzed for our friend, the one by 2 man out there? Seems like, seem like that one's working out pretty good, Mr. Simon. Yeah, it does. Um, it, it seems to be going very well. I mean, um, I believe there's a couple of customers actually so doing that, so they're, they're doing pretty well. Uh, they, they too would prefer the future to be a little higher relative to the cash, but, you know, you can't, you can't have everything. It's, going, it's certainly going in their direction. So, um, no, I think they're pretty pleased, and um, I think they'll probably hang on to it until such time as the, there's a bit more convergence between the two. But um, I think it's... Uh, I, I'm, we're pretty happy, you know. We we sent out in our newsletter just like last week that we had record um, open interest and record sort of um, daily volume numbers too. So we're pretty pleased. Yeah, if those traders, if they're upset with their the performance of that trade, then uh, they need to uh, check themselves. They're doing pretty well out there, you know. I can't look the old gift horse. Everyone wants a few extra points, I suppose, but still, we are many handles to the good on those. Let's see if we can say the same out here. For VIX land, the top 10 positions out here in VIX options. Uh, only cost you a buck 33 to break into the top 10 in VIX options right now. That gets you to the March 13 puts. 
Number nine, we've got the March 20 calls, 149,000. Number eight, also 149,000 of the March 17 puts. Number seven, we talk in 151,000 of the March 27 calls. Number six, March 30s, a buck 52 on the tape. Number five, 195,000 of the March 16 puts. So our final put, only three puts on the list this week. Probably not a surprise to most of you out there. Number four, 208,000 of the March 29 calls. And then number three, 218,000 of the March 28s. Number two, about a quarter million almost exactly of the March 25s. And rounding out the top 10, number one with the bullet. Not that much, actually. Only 372,000 of the March 24s. I thought that would be higher. Total of about 7.6 million on the open interest. That's about 5.2 million on the calls and about 2.4 million open on the puts. Coming into today, looks like a pretty decent day. Go figure out there. In uh, VIX options land, we've been talking for a while how the OI and just the volume in general, the ADV, were kind of anemic. They were starting to tick up as these uh, coronavirus fears were starting to linger starting back in January or so. And now we're seeing today so far, coming in a few minutes ago, about 1.1 million contracts on the tape. And before I start breaking down some of the paper here, Mr. Rock Lobster, we touched on it a little bit. On the option block yesterday, we have a listener question about it later. I'm sure people have it on the brain, so let's just let's just go over it again here. Our old friend, 50 Cent, this week, everyone's been asking, is he closing? Is he going to close? Did he close? Okay, we broke some of it down yesterday. Uh, regale our listeners, Mr. Rock Lobster, with what's Mr. 50 Cent been up to? How much has he taken off? Um, <laughs> this is a, the weird thing is he's still like he's dripping. He's dripping out of the um, he's dripping out of his calls. I. I'll tell you what I don't I, I don't know how how hit Mr. or Mrs. Fifty Cent does what they do uh, you know but it's still three hundred and seventy thousand open now remember paid fifty cents for these or less and they're six fifty bid he's up like how much is he up one hundred fifty million bucks is that right that's a uh, that's a uh, three hundred thousand times a hundred times fifty times uh, times six bucks. <laughs> That number is so big, I need to use my calculator. So, you see, it's pretty impressive capital gain. I'm just saying, you know, you see those commercials. Oh, you're buying options to make ten times your money. It's uh, you know, it's like uh, <laughs> it is a massively successful trade. What? How else? How? There's not much else to parse that. So, there's still three hundred something uh, open, and I think they've only closed about fifty thousand contracts, or and that's it. So. Um, I think, uh, like Simon was saying, I think they're waiting for the back rotation too because they're like, hell, VIX is 47, man. They still owe me like 20 bucks. So they're waiting to make some big money. That, on I think we just cracked it right there, Mr. Rock Lobster. The, the VIX futures, is, they're fading 50 cent. They're not going to give them those other 20 handles. They're holding back. <laughs> they know he's sitting there waiting for it. So they're just going to play, they're going to play that, you know, the old Mexican standoff. Who's going to blink first? Is he going to close out then the futures rally up? Or is the other? I think we just cracked it right there, sir. Well done. Well, you know that's what I try to I try to help on the investigation front. Um, uh, times, uh, hold on a second. I'm just looking at the at the crazy times a hundred. Yeah. So right now, okay, he's up 195 million dollars on that trade. So, <laughs> um, so that that is a pretty good. So I, I think you are. It is a Mexican standoff, right? <laughs> They're going to see what happens. We're going to make you. You're going to make you eat those calls and have them all go out worthless. So yeah, I could certainly see an argument for if you're him and you're sitting there looking at these VIX futures. You're like, I'm not taking these off yet. This is absurd. I got time. I got time. I got at least another ten handles coming my way. So uh, I'm going to sit back and uh, see how these things catch up. I, th- I think that is hilarious. I think I think we have uncovered. I think we have uncovered the skullduggery going on behind the scenes. 195 million, obviously, listeners. He's not just swinging for the fences naked. He's got other positions against it that are probably wearing it a little bit right now. But from the pure options, pure VIX options, volatility perspective out here, this one is one of those kiss kiss to the hands there of uh, it worked out pretty well. And he may work out even better as, as we see these options hopefully get marked maybe a little bit more in his favor out there. I, this has got to be, if you're sitting there on the desk right now for him, you got to be just, just pounding the table saying, come on, what are you doing to me? Uh, let's, let's go back out here. Uh, let's start off on Monday 
have a bit of a chronological breakdown of the week. Monday, ironically, also the most active day of the week until, of course, let's see what happens today. Today's on a, a pretty decent pace, so we could outpace it. But Monday was just a tick more than Tuesday. Monday was 1.55 million contracts on the tape. Of course, that was the day when all the weekend fears really just hit the market in a massive deluge to the downside. We saw this outbreak coming up out of North I almost said North Korea, Northern Italy, uh, which surprised the heck I think out of everybody. And that's really what seemed to start the death spiral with the market. And then we had other news of it spreading in other areas. But Italy really seemed to spark a lot of people. These fairly remote Italian hill towns suddenly coming down with the coronavirus. That seemed like a little bit outside the norm. And what did we see that day? Well, the big print out there, May 32 halves going up for 50 cents on the bid. <laughs> uh, so, our, so someone liking that 50 cent print whether that's our friend or not these were late though uh, and the, maybe he was gobbling up more at the time I don't know if he was adding or not but 36,000 going up of those on Monday also worth noting yeah, actually this was a, looks like a bit of a vertical also the June 30 is going up 36,000 times for 70 cents so this went up as a spread May 32 half to the June 30s uh, both of them on the bid though so maybe they're and these were both opening though which is kind of interesting so opening upside on the bid on Monday, if that is as it looks, then perhaps uh, they may have regretted that trade within <laughs> within a session or two. Also, saw about twenty two thousand on the March twenty three is going up for a buck sixty eight. That was pretty much not quite lifting the offer, but closer to it. Also, again, lots of dis- so many late prints in Vixland now it doesn't even merit saying anymore. A- assume they're all late unless otherwise otherwise mentioned here. Also, saw what looks like a bit of a weird three way March twenty sevens versus the Feb twenty ones. And the April 28th, all in a funky three-way, about 30,000 times each. A little bit more, a little bit less for each leg. Um, looks like maybe buying the Feb. So closing out the Feb, maybe to buy. And that's, let's see, that's not opening. And then uh, hitting the bid on the March and the April. So interesting, maybe rolling some Fed out, Feb out and taking it out to March or April and doing it 2x. That would be strange. Also saw a bit of a put spread versus calls. It was the uh, March 16, 13 put spread going up 20,000 times for 47 cents. So paper buying the 16 puts and then selling the 13 put for whopping three cents against it. I know Mr. Rock Lobster loves those. And then turning around looks like and perhaps hitting the uh, March 19 calls for 330. These are pretty tight. So exactly mid-market. So for his sake, I'm going to hope that Despite how it looked like it went up, I'm going to hope that he did it the other way. He sold the puts and bought the calls. Because if he sold those 19s, he's wearing it right now. Let's go on to Tuesday. And that was just a tick under Monday, 1.54 million. So just a wee bit behind Monday, the big print out here. It looks like a funky one by three. It was the April 26 is going up 21,700 times against 64,538 of the March 22s. Those went up for two and a quarter, buck and a quarter on the Aprils, so a net buck on the spread, but of course on a ratio. Lifting the offer on the March and pretty much crushing the bid on the April. So interesting stuff out there, rolling but doing so a kind of the opposite of a house money roll. That is indeed a roll, doing it three by one. So uh, perhaps an in- indicative of how well that one has worked out for him. Also saw a pretty sizable Looks like a call vertical. The March 26 is going up 61,000, almost 62,000 times against about the same number of the March 29s. That one going up for 54 cents. So not quite 50 cents, but 54 cents out there. And then a bit of a sizable April put vertical as well. April 14 half, 14, excuse me, April 14 half, March 14 put vertical going up for looks like 22 cents, 40,000 times. Paper buying the April looks like selling the March, so maybe rolling a little bit of a March position out to April and taking advantage to get another half a point on this one. Uh, 14 half, that seems like such a distant level now in the rearview mirror. By April, hopefully, hopefully this guy's got something on. Hopefully we see calmer, cooler, saner heads prevailing. Hopefully the virus is nowhere near as dramatic as they're making it out to be. And these 14 half puts come into play, but uh, perhaps we shall see March... 16 puts also on the table on Tuesday, 36,000 of those going up near the offer for 38 cents. And that's not enough. We had a March 25, 29 vertical, maybe on a bit of a ratio, maybe two by one, 35,000 the 25s versus looks like almost 2x of the 29s, buck 60 for the 25s and 90 cents 2x for the 20. Nine. So that's there's more. Obviously, one and a half million contracts. There's more to parse, but we'll keep on rolling out there. Those are just the big ones. Wednesday, a little bit lighter. Eight hundred eighty-one thousand contracts. The big print 
June 30 is going up for 88.2 cents, 30, 33,000 times. Those were pretty much close to the bid there. May, excuse me, March 20 puts, a buck and a half, uh, lifting the offer there 20,000 times as well. Also worth noting, we got uh, March 17 puts going up 50 cents. Paper crushing those 20,000 times. Not a spread, though. They went up many hours. Uh, 20,000 was just the print du jour on Wednesday. 20,000 also of the April 14 puts. Again, not a spread. Uh, just coming up for 28 cents on its own there. Kind of mid-market looks like towards the offer. So maybe paper paper picking up some of those as well. Also got April 15 March, or excuse me, April 50 March 45 vertical going up 17,000 by 18,250 times. So Maybe a bit of a house money roll there, rolling the March 45s up and out to the April 50s, doing it for actually a nickel, looks like a nickel debit uh, to them, which is kind of interesting. Uh, but then doing it for a little bit more of a ratio, so the, the greater size seems like maybe it's making up for that, a little bit of that, but still. Uh, interesting one there. That's the scenario we're in where we're rolling the 45s. We certainly have hit an interesting time. In the volatility landscape, March 14 puts also going up for about eight cents near the offer, 17,200 times. And if that's not enough, we got a March, June, call it a call roll, call it a diagonal, call it what you will. It was the March 22 is going up for 315. That's pretty meaty now, nearly 13,000 times against 14,142 of the June. It's going all the way out to June, the June 28s for a buck 11. Those ones kind of both of them leaning towards the offer, which is. Kind of interesting. Uh, I doubt that would be a time stupid, though we have seen stupider things going up out here. Thursday, a pretty active day as well. 1.3 million. Uh, someone putting up a lot more. VIX upside. The March 40 is going up 40,000 times for 61.6 cents. These are opening. These are through the offer, well through the offer. Someone, Mr. Rock Lobster, wanting himself some size upside. So perhaps our friend 50 opening more. Interesting if that would be the case, but someone wanting to play his game, playing a little bit more expensive, maybe doing it after the horse is out of the barn. But either way, someone trading way through the offer 40,000 times to get those. Looks like also Mr. Rock Lobster, about almost 35,000 of your favorite trade. Looks like a bit of a line in the sand put, though. These Listen, this market listeners give you a sense of how crazy things were. Uh, yesterday, these ape 20 puts were a bucko one at 209. That's, that's, that's pretty wide for an April, uh, April put out there. But again, that's, what, that's the environment we're in right now. And then also 30,700 of the March 20 puts going up for a buck 10, kind of near the bid on those. Oh, June 35 is going up for 30,000 times. These are through the bid. Actually, no, I take that back. These are right off the bid. The bid was 65 cents. These went up for about 67 and a half cents, 30,000 times. Also late, so... Take that with a, with a grain of salt. Let's get a little weirder. Let's go out here. A lot of size call prints going up. Let's go out to this risk reversal. It's like the May 35, 16 risk reversal, 16,750 times, uh, hitting the puts below the bid for 54 cents. They were bid for 60 cents. And then turning around, gobbling up the 35s for 57 cents. Actually got a decent fill there. These were off the offer. Uh, 16,750 times. I got a feeling this one. Looking pretty good uh, today out here. So whatever he gave up on those puts, he's more than made up for now on those calls. And let's fast forward here to today. We can we could spend the whole day talking Vic's paper this week. Today, so far, I said about a million contracts on on the tape. We saw someone taking off the twenty eights. Probably our friend fifty doing about looks like about thirty seven thousand of them today for around four bucks. So put them on fifty cents, taking them off for four bucks, eight x. I think most people will take that. Out there, that was some of the bigger prints on the tape today. Also saw him. 10,000, the March 23 is going for 7.5. And, and if that's not enough, looks like a March vertical. The 30.50 going up 10,000 times for looks like $3.10 with paper buying the 30s and maybe selling. So maybe they're rolling that uh, vertical up to the short 50 strike, in which case they might indeed be wearing it on those, uh, on those 30s. I'm guessing, just guessing. They didn't sell those for $3.75. But we shall see. Mr. Rock Lobster, before I toss it over to Simon, there's a lot of stuff going on in the world of VIX options this week. Any other prints outside of our friend 50 really catching your eye this week? What about maybe some of these openings here? Uh, someone gobbling up 40,000 of the March 40s. Any of these other prints really catching your eye this week, sir? Um, you know what I just saw? I just saw a lot of call spread buying. Like, you know, people are a lot quicker to pull the trigger now. 
and just buy call spread. So I just saw a lot of scattered call spread buying, uh, just like Simon was saying, the accreditation makes it interesting. The call spreads are still in VIX, probably in spikes. They're the cheapest, like they're the cheapest way to play the long of all side. Um, and when things are crazy, you know, they're crazy. And, uh, it, it's the easiest way to do it. So that's the, what I have seen the most of. I actually have not seen for a while. <laughs> I haven't seen a lot of puts. <laughs> so there was not like, oh, this is, you know, this, this is crashing like this week. I just, I haven't seen that at all. So um, not as much put action, but a lot of call spread action, call, call spread action. Yeah, we haven't seen that almost immediate fade that we saw pretty much every other time we saw Vol pop in. To their credit, that trade worked out pretty much every other time throughout almost the entirety of the bull market that the ball spiked. The people who faded it pretty aggressively, that worked out pretty well for them. This time, you're right, not really seeing uh, that print go in. Mr. Simon, anything catching your eye in just the C, the Palooza of uh, VIX options paper going up this week, sir? Uh, not really. I mean, uh, good on our friend 50 Cent. I mean, how good is that, that he can actually cash in on that thing? So, so many times he's bought it and not a lot has happened. So that's really, uh, really impressive. And um, as Meatball was saying, the the returns have just been simply outstanding. So good on him for doing that. Um, and uh, for, for me, the thing that stands out is I just think that this, this you know, as I mentioned at the top of the show, uh, it's too different between the futures and the cash. I think people may be relying on historical precedent by saying, well, every time the market falls, you know, something happens. Uh, this time around, like I said, I think that the, the quantity here is very, very different. You're talking about a virus that nobody can really make uh, any assumptions about because who knows what's going to happen. It does appear to be exacerbating a- around the world, maybe except for China at the moment. But um, yeah, I-, I feel like 28 on the futures contract in this environment, I think that's potentially too low. Kind of hard to take issue with that, some people might be taking issue with our old friend VXX right now, though. This is the product that most of you love to fade and have done so pretty aggressively pretty much throughout the tenure of this program. <laughs> and a lot of people out there were. We were just talking not too long ago about, oh, how crazy it is that you know people were lining up on those Feb 13 puts and all the other good stuff that's going on out there as a result. 13 seems like such, such a distant memory now out there in VXX land because right now, listeners, we're seeing a VXX north of the 24 handle, almost 24 and a half. That puts it up over 10 handles, nearly 11 handles from where it was on our last show. Hit a high of, looks like 24.90 seems to be the intraday high, and that was that was a high for the week as well. That was earlier this morning, so threatening 25, though not quite. So all those folks who were fading the downside, not so much this week, but it seems like the worm has turned a bit out here in VXX. Have you said many times, and we're going to break it down now, the top positions, it ain't all puts all the time out here in VXX. In fact, quite often the calls do outnumber the puts on the OI. Now, clearly this is fading to the upside with calls as well, but still, for a product that everyone likes to talk about with puts, a lot of calls trade. And let's see what's out here. Let's go to the top 10 out here in VXX right now. Let's see. One, two, three, four. It's actually... 50-50 exactly calls the puts out there, which is, I think, somewhat telling, given what we're seeing out there right now. Number 10, 31,000 of the March 16 puts. Number 9, 33,000 of the June 34 calls. Number 8, 35,000 of the Feb 13 puts. Number 7, 37,600 of the April 14 puts are only April on the list. Number 6, 42,000 of the March 12 puts. Number 5, 45, almost 46,000 of the March 25 calls. Number 4, 46,000 of the March 15 puts. Numero trace here, 60,000 of the March 24 calls. Number two, 65,000 of the March 23s. And number one with the bullet this week, kind of a bit of a polar opposite of what we were just talking about. Everyone was racing to the downside. Feb 14 puts, Feb 13 puts. A lot of love for those. Now, those seem like they're distantly in the rearview mirror because March 22 calls, listeners, 77,700 of those bad boys, somebody piling into the upside in VXX and liking it, I'm thinking right now, to the tune of a total of about 2.7 million contracts open. It's a pretty active time for VXX. In fact, right now it's threatening, let's see if it got there. Coming into showtime, it was threatening a million contracts. It was at 952,000. Let's see if it broke a million. Yes, it did. 1.2 million contracts. Think about that, listeners. I'm not talking VIX. I'm not talking SPY. I'm talking VXX, 1.2 million options contracts on the tape today. That's just stunning paper. The ADV right now, 
soaring, as you might imagine. It was looking pretty good at around a quarter of a million. Now it's up to 431,000 out there. So just uh, crazy things. Let's just look really quickly at some of the big prints out here in VXX. Let's just look at today. That's all we really have time for. Uh, the March 22 is the big print today. Through the offer for $3.65, 46,000 times. That looks like that was a spread against 16, almost 17,000. So a bit of a ratio there of the March 27s going up for a buck 76. Oh, there's another leg to this as well. There's actually, actually there's four legs to this. So it looks like it may be a, uh, and then the March 22 is also going up 18,000 times again. So two legs of the March 22s total of it looks like about 64,000 of those against April 27s and March 27s for 30,000 and 17,000 respectively. Weird, weird print out there, but that's putting up a lot of the paper out here. Today, that one spread, it looks like it accounts for over yeah, over 100,000 contracts. Just in and of itself, 20,000 of the March 21 puts going up for 85 cents and 20,000. Also, this is a bit of a, it's like a put vertical, March 21, 18 put vertical going up for, looks like about 68 cents, 67 cents here, 20,000 times paper. Buying the 21 puts, selling the 18 puts. So buying a bit of a, so not all upside all the time. Buying a little bit of a downside vertical, also 20,000 of the ape, actually, total of 40,000 of the ape 20. Actually, it's like a bit of a straddle going up here. Ape 25 straddle, 20,000 times. Paper selling the bid, selling the puts, excuse me, to say, and buying the call. So, a bit of a perhaps conversion reversal going on, but you don't see those too often in VXX, which is, again, makes these interesting times. And also, looks like nearly 40,000 of the April 20 puts going up for a buck and a half through the bid here. Uh, just crazy paper. We can keep going. Mr. Rock Lobster, anything catching your eye in your vol trading club this week in the product that all your crazies usually love to fade, but this week not so much? VXX, sir? Just short term call buying. That's it. Just short term call buying. Not anything fancy. Just uh, crazy backwardation. Um, crazy vol. Um, I thought it's the best trade all week. Um, just call. Calls are cheap. Strangles are cheap in there relative. Um, so, yeah, that's – I would say, yes, making that trade myself and our our pit chat, and that's uh, was the daily trade in my ball trade club, just buy strangles and just slightly long delta strangles and VXX at the beginning of the day. And at the end of the day, you're selling them out or you're holding them and keeping them to the next day. So um, I, I think – and. I still think that as a trade, that's not going away, especially when you have uh, almost $5 a week in uh, a positive decay for VXX with where the cash. So it's just, it, you have, it's like you have crazy ranges. And uh, so um, it's, that's, I still think that is a, it's a great trade. It won't always be here, but it's here right now. So uh, um, there you go. That's the, that's the best I got for you on VXX. <laughs> and hopefully you guys got some good stuff for us as well. It's a crazy week. we got to get some of you guys on the show. So without further ado, let's head on into the Volatility Voicemail. It's time to share your thoughts and opinions with your fellow Volatility traders. It's time to check the Volatility Voicemail. Make your voice heard by dialing 779-669-4VOL. Posting a comment on the optionsinsider.com, sending an email to questions at the optionsinsider.com, or posting your questions to twitter.com slash options, or facebook.com slash the options insider. All right, welcome to the Vol voicemail. Easy for me to say the portion of the show where you guys take the range of questions and comments. A lot of people chime in, as you might imagine. As they listen in live to the show, too. Let's, I just like this handle. Man 02454530. Well, there you go. That's an interesting uh, handle there. He, he, he questions your statement that the SPX could move 3 plus percent a day. Uh, he says that would be interesting. Well, hopefully you think it's interesting now because that's pretty much what we're seeing right now, Mr. Man 02454530. Try saying that five times fast. People, when they pick their handles, sometimes I wonder exactly what goes into it. Uh, if you got Cam the Man chiming in saying, uh, when we said 50 Cent is up $195 million on the options leg of his trade, he wants to know, is that real? Uh, yeah, that's, that's real money. I mean, obviously, he hasn't taken it all off. He's, that's paper money right now, so it could go away. We are kind of 
speculating that these futures are probably going to move his way, in which case the options will look even better. And that's probably, with, if I'm him, that's probably what I'm hoping for as well out there. And, of course, obviously he's not doing these options in a vacuum. He has something else against it, which could have made or lost, probably lost, could have lost more than that. Maybe not, but you never know. Uh, but either way, he has this hedge on against something. It's a hedge, remember. So uh, as nice as this is, there's other working parts of his portfolio that probably not working as as well as this. <laughs> I like this handle, Walsaurus. Walsaurus just says, oh, my God. Yeah, I think we're with you there. Oh, my God is, is an appropriate response to, to what we're seeing out there in the markets. Uh, go back under your covers. It'll all be good soon here, Mr. or Mrs. Walsaurus. Yella. Yella wants to know, did 50 Cent take his profits? Thank you. Yeah, we just talked about that, Yella. But he's still, as you mentioned, he's still sitting on a, a decent amount on this position. So uh, interesting stuff out here. We'll let you know. We'll have a 50 cent watch. Maybe Mr. Rock Lobster, I'll task you with that. What do you say? You'll be on 50 watch. And the second he closes it all out, you have to let our listeners know. What do you say? Uh, yeah, I, I mean, I do, I do keep it up. I'm just Because just, he killed the ball last time, even just selling 100,000 of them. So I, I, from what I can tell, 250,000 still. So just do the, or at least 300,000. So 300,000 times, times 100. <laughs> Yeah, it's pretty basic That's math. A lot of moolah. Pretty basic math at the end of the day, and uh, when you're when you're calculating it in your position, it looks pretty good. Uh, let's see here. Interesting thought question. This is something we've talked about before. Haven't touched on it in a while, but it seems appropriate given where we are right now. This comes from Thomas. I've heard it said that it's best to buy VIX when it's high and sell it when it's low. Is that true? And or why? If that is indeed true. Interesting comment. We talked about this before. I don't think we've had given Simon a chance uh, to weigh in on this in the past. So, Mr. Simon, do you agree with this old adage? And uh, if so, explain it to Mr. Thomas why you do, sir. Oh, thanks for the curly one, and I, I like it. Um, this is a, <laughs> this is a very this is a very vexing question. Um, so, that, yeah, I guess there's there's a momentum as- aspect to this uh, law which is that, you know, if the market is going up, then that's the way of the traffic, then you should buy. And conversely, if it's going down, don't fade the move, go with it. So that's an that's a, that's a old adage that traders use to try and, you know, determine whether or not they should be long or short something. When it comes to VIX, it's a little bit different, though. VIX is a different property. Um, a stock price can keep going down all the way to zero, um, whereas um, we're, we're talking about a quantity here which is different than that. It's not just the value of something specific like a like a commodity. You're talking about the level of volatility. So it has um, – there's a few properties that make it a bit different. Like there's something called a reflective boundary. So what that is is whenever the vol gets to sort of 10, you find that it reflects from that point no matter what's happening just because it's just too darn low to sell. So volatility is a little bit different than that. And um, so on the one hand, yes, you could say, well, follow the trend. But I think that with volatility, it's a bit different. There, I think there's a, a tighter cap and a tighter floor. So you have to be cognizant of that and get out, I think, a little sooner. It's not as simple as just saying, ride with it. Hopefully that makes sense. Yeah, I think you're right when you're talking about the momentum aspect. That's kind of what I believe what he's referring to. This is what we've discussed on the show many times in the past. A lot of people have come on the show over the years kind of espousing a similar philosophy. I think what they're boiling it down to, Thomas, is that like, look what we've seen. Like We saw when VIX exploded over 30 this week. That's when things it has a tendency to keep moving for a little bit. VIX, when it's high and moving, that's when it can outperform. Eventually, of course, you're going to want to fade it because it can't stay north of 30 or 40 or whatever forever. So longer term, you're going to want to fade it. But in the very near term, when VIX is super high, it, it can it has the ability to continue. It's more prone to keep moving and make large moves <laughs> to the upside when it's at those levels than it is vice versa for the low end. We look at 2017, the entirety of the year. VIX languished at pretty much nothing. So it can stay at the once it at once it's at those extremes, it can kind of languish there for a little bit. And that's pretty much what it's referring to. A little bit shorter on the upper end, obviously. It can languish on the low end a lot longer than it can. On the higher, Mr. Rock Lobster, you concur with all that, sir? Or do you have some other mantra you guys say in your ball trading club when you're swapping hats and secret handshake? No, I, I, you know, I think Simon's right. When it's on the low end, the, the ball momentum's just low. You know, there's just no vol. So, you know, you could you could buy VIX for a turnaround, but we all know that you, you could sit there and buy calls at a twelve VIX for a very long time. Sometimes, you know, because you don't get you know 
that VIX is down there for a reason. Usually, realized well is much lower. So the mo- the vol momentum, everything is just dead slow. And on the upside, you know, they're they're pricing. You know, now the vol at the money is 50, 50 or sixty percent. But they weren't doing that in the beginning of the week. You buy like 20, 28 percent vol at the money, and you know you're getting like probably 70 or 80 percent intraday realized moves like crazy vol so um and and then vol you know once it's higher like the the realized is picking up so much the momentum's pushing uh the markets hot you know in one direction like crazy fast um so i i think uh, you know that the adage like that is there's a reason it's because the it's the way um, the volatility works. So I disagree with Simon. But that's all I should say. Make it easy on your listeners and say, do what Simon did. <laughs> Especially as your connection is, is fading out here. We have so many more questions. You guys have a lot of questions on the brain. Maybe we should do an all special volatility questions episode maybe next week. But we're coming up against it. We've got to do the most difficult part of the show still to come, listeners. It is time for the crystal ball. It's time to peer into the future and reveal what the volatility gods hold in store. It's time to look into the crystal ball. All right, everybody, welcome to the crystal ball. This is, of course, a portion of the show where we break down what the heck is going on over the course of, or excuse me, what we expect to come up for the week to come. From a vol perspective, I've been trying to delay it a little bit to give everyone some time to process because... This is a challenging one, <laughs> listeners. I'm just looking here right now. I'm trying to calculate our results from last time. Uh, we Remember, we, we prognosticated last on Valentine's Day. We were guessing for the subsequent Friday, and we were pretty much all low. Not quite as off as we are this week. So we weren't guessing for this week. So I won't make, I won't make our prognostications count at the time. Weirdly enough, I was feeling the most vol. I was at a 15 and a quarter, and at least on the spike side, it was at about almost 18 and a quarter last Friday. So I was within three points. Uh, everybody else was pretty much lower. Andrew, next closest at 1485. Uh, then Simon was feeling a little bit, little bit less at 1465. And our guest, Pat Hennessy, was way to the downside. He was fading this pandemic. He was at a 13 and a half. Uh, so none of us were within our one point margin of victory last week. And if you fast forward to this week, clearly those prognostications ain't going to do it. So we're going to kick things off. There are no winners for this week, so I have no obvious people who have to go first. So tell you what, Simon, since we so rudely ripped you out of bed, I will give you the choice. I will allow you to choose whether you want to go first or if, in turn, you want to choose someone else to go first. Have at it, sir. Me, Paul, goes first. (laughs) Oh, well, he's lucky because he's not here. So that would mean, I guess, I guess the meatballs, meatballs work wife, the rock lobster, will have to stand in for him. That's, that's you, Mr. Rock Lobster. You, Simon has tapped you. You get the dubious honor of going first today. This is a tough one. It's okay, Simon. I've, I've been called worse, so that, that, that's okay. Um, uh, you know, he actually just wants to do that so he can scum me, which we all know really what the real reason is on that particular. Um, that, that could be a smart move this week. To go first. This is one of our more challenging ones. I, I'm going to say I'm going to say we're going to be south of 30 next week, but we still have things more to come. I'm going to say 29.50. Interesting, yes. interesting. 29 half for the rock lobster out there. You know, I've been mulling this over kind of throughout the show because I knew we were going to get to this part eventually. <laughs> it's, it's, this is one of the more challenging ones, listeners. There's so many other shoes. That could drop here. Obviously, the, the virus concerns could grow. We could have more outbreaks, in which case we could see a VIX north of 50 this time next week very easily. Uh, but I'm going to lean on the tip of – it seems crazy now to say these levels, but that sounds saner. But compared to now, they are a little bit saner. I'm, I'm thinking a similar direction to the Rock Lobster, but nowhere near as low. I'm going to go a little bit higher. I'm gonna still north of the 30 handle. This time next week, I'm going to say 32.45 for. Uh, should I put that for Simon? That would not be correct. That would be for me. There we go. All right, <laughs> 32.45. So there you go, Mr. Simon. I'm on the upside at 32.45. Mr. Rock Lobster is on the downside at 29 and a half. I bought you as much time as I can, sir. Have at it. What are you feeling for this time next week? Yes, I'm sorry. Uh, yes, so I'm going to be more bullish than both of you. I'm going to be at 
43. Oh, so pretty much close to unched to where we are right now. A couple points shy. Of where we're at about a 45 right now. Simon's saying we're going to be here. Hey, I could, I could see an argument for a lot of different volatility levels uh, this time next week. And just to clarify, we're at about a 45 and a quarter in the VIX cash. Spikes at about a 45, pretty much even right now here, listeners, as we make our final most dangerous prognostication. All right. That music, listeners, means unfortunately we've come to the end of another epic sojourn through the world of volatility. Oh, what an epic one it was. Hopefully you got some solace, some insight, some enjoyment out of this program. Hopefully talked you off the ledge a little bit. Hopefully you're like Simon talking at the top of the show. Hopefully you had some nice upside positions on and you're celebrating this week as opposed to cowering under your covers. Uh, if you keep those questions coming, we do want to hear from you. If you can't make it on to Ball Views, we'll try to rotate your questions onto the other programs that hit the network all week long. We'll get your question answered. Don't worry. So keep them coming. But before we go, let's go back around the horn. Let's uh, give Simon Pratt a place because we dragged him so rudely out of bed. Mr. <laughs> Mr. Simon, sir, uh, what is cooking in the land of T3 and indeed spikes in the coming weeks, sir? Well, we, um, as everybody knows, we continue to work hard on the futures. Um, uh, fingers crossed that shouldn't be too far away. So very excited about that. Um, we're pleased over the last week to have the, the high high point for us in terms of you know daily volume as well as open interest. So we just keep keep uh, trucking along, um, and you know hopefully in the not too distant future we can uh, bring you some good news. Yeah, it would be nice to have a spikes future this week, would it not, sir? That would have been an interesting one to see. Maybe that one wouldn't have had a twenty point <laughs> twenty point gaff between <laughs> between the spikes future and the cash. But we it's only theoretical right now. We won't know for certain until. Uh, they get their ducks in a row there at the regulators and, and finally get those listed again. Remember, they were listed ever so briefly, listeners. Uh, but yeah, it would be nice to have them back again. T3index.com is the place to go in the meantime, listeners. And of course, you want to check out all things Spikes. MyAx Options, that's M I A X Options.com slash Spikes. Get you to a cool overview page. Has a nice little schnazzy video explaining what Spikes is, some good data there, as well as, of course, a link to a fun little show called volatility views i think you might like it and mr rock lobster if ever there was a time to be in a cool vol trading club with fancy jackets and secret handshakes and secret clubhouses now is the time sir so if folks want to join your club where should they go what should they do uh yes uh you can join our vol trading club yes at optionpit.com uh just go where it says uh memberships and sign up for the vol trading uh do a, we do a webinar every week, and we, you know, a newsletter every day. At least, you know, at least anywhere between one and five trades per week. We've had a very good uh, year and start to the year so far. So, want to learn how to trade vol and you know, you know, be on the right side of things and not kind of fight the, not fighting the gravity of volatility and ride with it. Come on over to our vol trading club. There you go. Be on the right side of history. Join. Volatility Trading Club. Get the premier tier. Get the fancy jacket, the hat, and the secret handshake. On behalf of the Greasy Meatball, I should say, the Rock Lobster, and the Spikes Father, and myself, we'll see you all next week for more Volatility Views. Volatility Views is brought to you by MyAx, one of the fastest options platforms in the world. MyAx is now trading options on the Spikes Volatility Index, offering pinpoint accuracy, radically faster dissemination, and a highly transparent settlement auction for confident trading, all for competitive exchange fees. It's time to make a change and give yourself an edge with Spikes. Learn more about Spikes at www.myaxoptions.com. Com slash spikes. Options involve risk and are not suitable for all investors. The statements made are provided for information purposes only and are not intended to provide and should not be relied on for financial or legal advice. You're listening to the Options Insider Radio Network, the home of the Options Podcast. For more quality options programs, visit theoptionsinsider.com or search for Options Insider Radio Network in your podcast provider of choice. Listeners can also access all of our programming through our mobile app available on the iTunes and Google Play stores. 
select programs are also available via live stream at Mixler.com slash options dash insider. That's M-I-X-L-R dot com slash options dash insider. Don't forget to follow along with your favorite programs and submit your own questions for the hosts at Twitter.com slash options, StockTwits.com slash options, Facebook.com slash the options insider, or via questions at the options insider.com. <laughs> 